I thought it would be a good idea to play Animal Crossing at the start of 2020. I would play New Horizons, but since that one isn't out yet, I'm playing New Leaf. Welcome to my New Leaf updates. Starting out, I decided to name my town Spagonia. When New Leaf first came out, I named my original town Spagonia. I don't have that town save anymore, and I don't really remember why. I have a habit of restarting, so that's probably what happened. I decided on a town layout and answered Rover's dumb face test on the train ride to town. I was greeted by everyone at the train station, and this thick thought he told me I was the mayor. So I told her that she must have some kind of problem with her head, because I'm not the mayor, you dumb dog, just listen to me. She gives me a map, and we head to town hall. I guess I'm the mayor now. Then Isabel reminds me that that I need a house. So I hit up the local house dealer, Tom Nook, and we get it taken care of. The dude needs to build it, so for now, I'll just live in a tent. Also, I started this town on New Year's Eve, so it's currently the 31st of December when this footage was recorded. I tell Isabel that I have a home now, and then we started flirting in her office. I checked her ID to see if she was 18, and we're all good. Officially, as mayor, it's tradition to plant a big tree, but they ran out of big trees, so I just planted a baby one. So you might not know how this game works, but let me explain to you why the New Year's events might be the worst time to start a new town. Isabel is in charge of the event, so there goes two days of getting anything actually done. You can't get work towards your developer's permit, and you can't get all the items like watering cans from Isabel, because she will offer you to buy it from her, but only when she's in her office. But since it's New Year's, the 31st and 1st, she's standing outside and can't help you with anything town related. It sucked. I got right to work though, I needed to pay off my debt to that damn raccoon, so I did what any other man would. I picked a bunch of fruit. I also, of course, collected a ton of seashells and sold them to the raccoon's nephew. I made enough money to buy his tools and then it was off to making even more money. I got distracted and ended up making a monster. I'm- I'm so sorry, snowboy. Apparently, if you get the proportions on a snowman incorrectly, you literally make an e-boy snowman. So I just ditched the emo and went to go make more money. All the bugs, fish, and fossils I get, I'll be donating to the museum. I'm only going to sell stuff I've already donated so that I can upgrade my museum even faster. I got my ID picture, sold a bunch of stuff, and I bought out the raccoon baby's store. I want to sell out his store every day so that the upgrades also come sooner too. I paid the 10,000 bell down payment for my house so that I can stop living in a tent, went for a little bit of shopping, and introduced myself to everyone, you know, just normal stuff on the first day. Of course, that night I also celebrated the New Year's countdown with the villagers and my hot assistant, Isabel. The countdown sounds like everyone's about to get nuked. Yay, 2020. I love this game, man. So the next day, New Year's Day, the first of 2020, I got my house finally. I had a few morning drinks outside my house and got into my New Year's Day hat. I found out someone new was moving in on my way to work, which was also closed because of Isabel and then wait what the hell's going on I found a genie okay Yoink. So since there isn't much to do in the office, I went straight to chasing that bell bag again. During my grind, I went for another try making a snowman, and I f***ed up so hard I made a snow ma'am. This snow babe was so nice, she told me to bring her some occasional snowflakes, wink wink, for some furniture. She wants me to bring her some coke. That e-boy snowman is still whining about his tragic life. Can't wait for his SoundCloud song. I bring the snow ma'am her blow, and she gives me a snow wall for my home. Oh, and Isabel gave me this rat for the year of 2020. I bought out that that dumb kid's store again and went about my daily shopping routine. I talked to Tom Nook about my home and now I owe the guy 39,000 bells, so I went on a fish grind. Play the montage! Finally, it's the next day, and of course I finally get to sit in my desk. But since New Year's is over, I should dress more properly. I go make some adjustments at home and change my clothes. Clout goggles to start the new year right. A beautiful goth babe moved in next door to me. I'm finna smash for sure. But she seemed kind of annoyed when I came over. She's totally into me. Sprinkles, the local SJW, was freaking out today for no reason. That's so Sprinkles, what a bitch. Suddenly she follows me home and just invites herself over. It was getting awkward, so I thought she would leave if I left, so I I did. She finally left me alone. I went about my day, robbed Nookling Junction, bought some new drip, then it was back to flexing on my villagers. Goldie said she wanted me to deliver something to Sprinkles, that's psycho bitch. But since Goldie's such a sweetheart, I agreed. When I found Sprinkles, she opened the present from Goldie and it was this disgustingly ugly shirt, perfect for a loon like Sprinkle. But because I did her a favor, she gave me a shirt. An icy shirt! I gotta say, you're not too bad, Sprinkle. I changed the flag to a beetle and made the town tune into Can You Feel the Sun 
Sunshine from Sonic R. Fucking idiots thought it was my own original tune. I gave Sprinkles a shout out on the bulletin board and asked Isabel how I can make the people like me. She said water plants, but she won't give me a watering can and I can't ask because I sold all the seashells and now suddenly she wants a seashell. I got Sparkle a fish. I got Matilda an ugly chair in exchange for an uglier shirt. Also, Sprinkle fucking robbed me for my shirt. Like, what the hell, Sprinkle? I hope I wasn't robbed twice because after I bought a painting from Red, Goldie tells me that the dude scams too. I wrote Sprinkles a thank you letter for the shirt I enjoyed so much and got my rating to 86%. Next week, I should get access to the island and also the developer's permit. That's been my first week of Animal Crossing New Leaf. I hope I continue this. Please, God, please. So starting out on Friday, I met this camel named Sahara. She told me she worked for HGTV and was this professional home designer. So I gave her 3,000 bells to redo the look of my home and I got robbed. I found out some dude named Peck was moving in and I went straight to helping out the innocent townsfolk. The local coke head looked like she was slowly melting. It's only a matter of time before she disappears. I better hurry up and get all of the snow furniture. Croquet, this weird frog I never talked to, was craving some fruits out of nowhere. So I gave him a peach and he gave me a side table. Simon wanted to trade my emerald for an emerald jacket. And being the Sonic fan I am, there was no way I was going to give up my chaos emerald. But I needed to have that jacket. At today's meeting with Isabel, I found out that my town rating was 100%. So now I just have to wait until my town permit comes in the mail, which should only be by tomorrow. I have Amazon Prime. That was such a shitty joke. <laughs> Later on, I gave Goldie a fish for a new shirt, and oddly enough, I vibed with it. It's Animal Crossing shopping time, and then later down the line, I finally convinced Isabel to give me a damn watering can. Yeah, look at me go! Water the plants, ha! I spent the sunset flirting with my goth girl Agnes, and she made me wear this ugly shirt. I didn't really want to, but if it's from the cute girl next door, I simply had to. The next day, I ended up playing much later than usual. The music and colors in this game really set the vibe. Playing at night versus playing at day feels so different, even when I'm just doing the same stuff, like buying out the shops, collecting fossils, and getting money from rocks. That night, Goldie wanted another fish, so I went out to go find her one, and I ended up finding the scariest fish I've probably ever pulled out of the ocean. So there was no way I was gonna give her that fish. Get dabbed on, Goldie. Get it? Da the snowman was on her last breath, and honestly, seeing her like that kind of scared me. The snow people in this game remind me that we're just like them, in the sense that our existence is just as limited, and that eventually, everything will come to an end. Animal Crossing's entire game is based around time passing by, and before I even realized, Snowboy was gone. I met the new neighbor Peck, and he was as dull as ever. I found perfect peaches and decided to plant them for the future. I finally got around to giving Goldie that fish, and in return got a really cool shirt. Agnes sold me some flooring for 4,000 bells, and now I think she might just be taking advantage of me. Isabel and I did some work after hours, and we might have gone a little bit too far. Long story short, we ended up building a fountain, but we need to pay nearly 100,000 bells for it, so we gotta wait a while. The next morning when I woke up, I must have left the door open or something, because when I looked inside my entire house, was frozen. This day wasn't too eventful, just some more usual daily stuff. Eventually, I saved enough bells and was able to pay off my first home loan. This cool new guy named Lyle moved into Tom Nook's office. He rates how cool people's homes are, so unlike that stupid camel, this guy actually works for HGTV. With my payment out of the way, I was able to get my expansion to my house. Someone thought it would be a good idea to live directly next to Town Hall, some douchebag named O'Hare. A new store is currently in the works, which sucks because after paying my taxes, I'm dirt poor. I hate for you guys to see me like this, but every animal crosser eventually reaches this point in their life. I started shaking trees for money. I didn't care if I had the chance of a beehive falling out of the tree because all I had to do was be quick enough to catch the bees with my net. I can even sell the hive and make some extra money. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Yo! The weekend's over, and on Monday, Tortimer came to my village to say hello. But then he also tells me that he's been chilling on this island with loads of hot babes and coconut oil. He said that a boat will start coming to this dock every day starting tomorrow if I ever want it in. I was right about that guy O'Hare. He was a total jack rabbit. I actually kind of like this guy, and he has a cute little hat. Agnes wanted me to give her my peaches, and I ended up with this snowy sweater. The store that was building yesterday finally opened up today, so you know I had to go in there and rob them. They ended up being this hipster vegan store where they sold nothing but flour, and I ain't talking about that good stuff. My house got bigger, so now I can actually move around. Then it was back to daily stuff, but since I didn't have any money, I did a little bit of fishing. Play that montage. 
Staying alive, it's day five, and my N-word Lyle from the Happy Home Designer sent me a really cool shirt for having a dope house, according to him. I bought out all the stores for like the millionth time, but this time the weed store was included, and I made a point to talk to Sable every day to force her to speak. She actually started warming up to me, and I think I'm gonna smash this hilf pretty soon. Hilf stands for hedgehog, I'd like to f- Yada yada, more shopping out of the way, until I stumbled upon these beautiful anime eye goggles that reminded me too much of Filthy Frank, so you know I had to wear them. After getting all my daily stuff out of the way, it was officially island time. I headed down to the docks where I met this middle-aged pedophile named Cap'n. I liked Cap'n more when he was a bus driver. It was a more fitting job for a pedo. If you didn't know, Cap'n is a Japanese creature called a Kappa that is sometimes known for kidnapping children. Anywho, he sings a beautiful song as you sail to this island. This becomes less charming the more you sail to and from this place, trust me. Once you're there, you meet Cap'n's entire family running the resort. There's Lalani, the person behind the counter, who I think is Cap'n's wife, guessing from the photo behind her. Layla, this kid who I'm guessing is Cap'n's offspring, otherwise this guy's got a lot of real explaining to do. Then there's Grams, who runs the shop and only accepts this currency called medals, which you can get from playing the island tour games by talking to Leilani. I'm sure there are ways you can upgrade the games, but from what I've seen so far, they're all in the easier, simple setting. I know they change every day, I just don't know how to change the difficulty. It might just be from playing it all the time, or maybe it just depends on the amount of people on the island. Now that I have access to this island though, it's time to get to some serious work. See, there's a certain way to make lots of money in this game, and it comes from catching beetles late at night on this island. In order to capitalize on the beetle spawn, you want to make sure you get rid of every on the grass of the island. You want to basically just have palm trees so you can make rounds and catch tons of beetles. You can only really do this method around 9 p.m. because that's usually when the bugs start spawning, so I'll be back later to make bank off of that. In the meantime, let's try to farm some metals so that I can come back one day and get that wetsuit. The mini games I played included stuff like shooting balloons, which was really easy and dare I say, kind of boring. I got a gold rank on that too, which gives you six to seven medals depending on which game you get a gold rank in. Then I played this ore collecting game where emerald were worth the most and you needed to collect the most valuable jewels. That one was pretty fun and you could end it the second your pockets were too full or the challenge was just over. Which lots of the mini games don't let you do, they usually drag out from 5 to 10 minutes which sucks but hey. Then there was hide and seek which was easy but fun and I liked seeing other villagers that could be in my town. The last one was a diving mini game that kinda just sucked because there were barely any creatures for me to dive for. I just spent most of my time swimming around which wasn't all that fun either. That night however was when the game changed and I mean it's seriously felt like what I was doing was criminal. I met my guy at the dock that night and I crept my way to the island. Obviously, all the new bugs and fish I got, I'd be donating first, so some creatures I never got to make any profit off of right away. But aside from all the beetles I caught, I saw some fishes in the water, and I caught a straight up shark, yo! And a hammerhead, dude! A freaking hammer! So after a bunch of rinse and repeat walking, I eventually got back home, donated the new critters, and then sold the rest. That first trip, I made 165,000 bells. I went back to the island, looped around for for another half hour and when I got back I made half a million bells in one night. I woke up the next day sneezing so I went inside really quick to grab a tissue. I forgot to mention that I also put the bell ordinance in act so the next time I have a little island escapade I'll be making 30% more bells than usual. First thing I did the next day? Yup. I paid off my house, easily bought out everyone, even the clothing store. I even bought the ugly clothing I didn't want. I paid for the fountain and was surprised to find out that the entire time we were asking for donations, we only managed to raise 2,000 bells. Maybe it's just Isabel, but I didn't know my whole town was all cheapskate. Another dude moving directly next to town hall? What the hell, you guys? For some weird reason, there was this gypsy tent outside of the town tree, so I entered inside and she offered me some psychedelics. Normally, as a mayor, I declined, but this was some good shit, guys, like wow. Later, I went back back to the island and grinded for some more medals. I played this one fruit maze game where you needed to find all the right fruit, and this one fossil game which I didn't really like at first but it ended up being one of my favorites. You gotta find all the fossils and then place them correctly in the room next door. It's a pretty cool mini game. On the last day, it was actually snowing. I know we see snow on the ground but we didn't get to see it falling. I think it even added to the music. For some reason I started hearing a lot more bells which is such a nice idea. Also my house is now bigger, yeah! This new guy goose isn't even a goose. He's a fucking turkey. I found someone's notebook on the ground which was filled with a ton of confessions and sin. So I knew exactly who this book belonged to. Matilda. Also, I don't think I'm saying her name right, but who cares? I returned her doujinshi and she gave me this cute polo shirt. Finally, it was time to celebrate the fountain's creation, which I ended up paying for with my money. But I gave a speech and everybody clapped. Of course, I immediately started another project, which was going to be a bridge directly across from my house. Oh, and yeah, and I paid it off immediately. I paid off the rest of my expansion loan as well. Next time, I'll be 
be getting even more money. My house will probably see a rapid increase in growth, and I'm hoping we can upgrade those stores soon too. Man, I should really go outside. You may have noticed with your beautiful eyes that there was no update video last week. That's because the Animal Crossing gods thought it would be a wonderful idea to bless me with the flu. I had the flu all week, which resulted in me cancelling my multiplayer livestream I had planned, as well as kept me from playing this wondrous game. Of course I could have just played Animal Crossing while I was recovering, but usually when I get sick, I make it a point to not play any video games or do anything that might wear me out in any way so that I can heal sooner. Long story short, I didn't play any Animal Crossing for a whole week. So I hope you can understand that delaying this video and cancelling the stream made me super depressed. But it's okay, everything is fine now, because this week I'm able to make another Animal Crossing video. This update actually starts out on the 11th, which was literally the day before I got the flu and stopped recording. Nighttime is always a fun time, especially tonight because I finally got the second story to my house. I furnished it a little bit to make it look like a normal home, considering my entire downstairs looks like Elsa's castle. Red was in town once again, so to ensure I don't get scammed by this guy, I went on the New Leaf wiki to compare the fake art to the real one. I know there's totally someone out there that thinks looking up the real version of the artwork is cheating, but the dude's a freaking scammer! How am I the one cheating? I ended up buying the Mona Lisa one, I'm pretty sure that one's legit. That night we also celebrated the creation of the new bridge outside of my house. I really like the look of this wooden bridge, I wonder if I can demolish the other one and make it wooden too. After the ceremony, Sprinkles approached me and immediately ruins the hype with her shitty timing. She asked me if it was a good idea to move away, and I seriously, I begged her to stay you guys. I found out the store would be closed on the 12th, meaning it was finally time for that upgrade. I decided to do some more beetle grinding to get more bells, and I even did a few more island games to get myself a wetsuit. I played the ore game until I finally had enough to buy it. A week later, I returned to Spagonia, free from the flu. There was a lot for me to catch up on. I decided to change into a more futuristic look since I had been gone for so long. Maybe nobody will recognize me and think I'm a time-traveling chief from the future. What I wasn't expecting was a racist remark from O'Hare on my first day back. He called me a Amigo, mistaking Native American for Mexican. What the heck, O'Hare, you friggin' racist? The entire marketplace got an upgrade, and I don't just mean TNT Mart. I mean, we even got a little shoe store now. Oh, and there's this new place where I can get massages at. The only thing that's putting me off from going there, though, is this anteater named Luna that looks like Snooky from the Jersey Shore. For some reason, my 3DS has parental shit on, so I can't even use the dream feature yet. Unless my parents know about my Animal Crossing save, and they just want what's best for me. I'll probably have to ask them first. Just because the store got fancier with new security cameras, doesn't mean they can stop me from robbing the place. And now with the store upgrade, we got a catalog machine that lets me order previous stuff that I've owned before. I love this feature and I'm glad I finally got it. Hoarding all my items was starting to get annoying. The music in the shoe store is great. I straight up sat there for a little bit just to listen to it. Listen, listen to this. Also, if you didn't know, Kix is one of my favorite Animal Crossing characters, so much so that I drew a picture of him as a JoJo character a few years ago. Here it is, enjoy the cringe. The megaphone was a new item I had too much fun with. Important announcement everyone! Isabel is a ho- When I entered the alpaca store, that lazy piece of sh Cyrus finally woke up. I forgot what I did to trigger it, I think it was from selling all those beetles. Either way, the dude's awake now and I can finally make some custom furniture. Except I don't have anything I want to customize yet, nor do I have crystals, which I think I also need. We had a little celebration for Snooky's massage place. Her boobs are so big she can't even clap, this is so weird! I invested in a bench project for the town. I thought everyone could use this bench to contemplate their existence, so I paid it off immediately. I went for a little bit of cliff diving with my new wetsuit. I found some of that good sh and also a crab. Also, I forgot it's fucking January, so when I got out of the water, I caught the flu again. The next day, some shrimp looking guy was waiting outside of my house all creepy. His name was Shrunk, and he told me about this really cool idea to build a club. The name could use some work, but then I remembered that children also played this game, so club lol is fine, I guess. He hands me a signature sheet and tells me I gotta get six people to sign this thing. I don't see why I have to do this guy's dirty work for him, but if it leads me to getting hammered in Animal Crossing then I'm willing to do anything. Immediately I got to work, asking everyone for signatures, starting with my goth girlfriend of course. She was super down, I mean what were you expecting? That turkey guy named Goose was down, but the more I talk to him the more I start to miss sprinkles and I hate that bitch. I caught my two best friends Matilda and Croquet in the middle of a conversation about traveling and decided to join in, but that shrunk weirdo was passing by and started staring me down, pressuring me to ask them about those signatures. So you getting those signatures, Ursus? Uh, yep. Just having a private conversation with my friend first. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yup, private conversation. Okay, I'll just leave. Just kidding, how's it going? How's it happening?
So I got those two to sign for the club. I swear, people in this town will celebrate anything. It's just a bench. I talked to Sable today and all my awkward interactions with her finally paid off. If you talk to her enough every day, not only do you discover the secrets of the dark Able sisters past, but you get this cool AR reader, which will come in handy in the future when I want to steal other people's designs for roads and clothing. Some of the villagers weren't outside, so I had to visit Peck and Goldie privately just so I can get them to sign this sheet for the club. I've been buying everything in the alpaca shop and then relisting them for 10,000 bells, thinking that I could trick some villagers into buying it. But I guess they were all born with smart zeros and ones because nobody was buying it. I handed over the signatures to Shrunk, and now I think we just wait a week before the club is finally built. In the meantime, I put down a street lamp in the middle of the spiky fruit forest. I didn't pay it off right away because I was broke. But that's okay. Tonight, the night of the meteor shower, I decided to do some more island beetle farming for some cash. Nothing really eventful happened, except for when I caught this saw shark, and then I caught another one! I made about another half a million that night. There was no way I was gonna make any more than that. Beetle farming is super boring. That same night, however, I made one of the biggest mistakes of my Animal Crossing career. I made life. At first, I didn't feel bad about making this thing, till sh** got too real and it started becoming too self-aware. I'm not about to make an entire snowman family for this one little snowman. I'm sorry, snow tyke, you'll melt alone. The next day, nothing really significant happened. I went about my daily routine, getting cash and robbing stores. I got this cool timer thing that I'll probably never use. Maybe I'll use it during a multiplayer stream. It would be pretty fun to see who could catch the most bugs and stuff. Matilda roasted the shit out of me for putting every item in the store for 10,000 bells. It hurts so much I relisted everything for 999. Asshole kangaroo. Finally, on the last day, I did some psychedelics with this gypsy cat. I really don't understand this part of the game. Is something supposed to happen when I decorate my house with the furniture she recommends? If you know the point of this cat, please tell me. We celebrated the lamp being finished. The lamp? We celebrated a fucking lamp? And since everyone seems to love lamps, I installed another one. From here on out, I have no idea what to expect from this game. We received a lot of minor upgrades, so I guess it's just more polishing and beetle grinding next week. I promise I'll have a multiplayer stream very soon, so keep your eyes open for it. Until then, I think I'm gonna take a big nap. Why is this game so tiring? What? How long have I been asleep for? Nine months? What happened when I was gone? Did they get rid of Corona? Have I reached a million subs? Do I have a girlfriend? No, there's just bugs and weeds everywhere. Oh. Waking up after a whole pregnancy's worth of time, I thought I would revisit my new leaf town, Spagonia. I have to say, coming back feels great. New Horizons wasn't exactly my cup of tea, and I know many of you have been wanting this. Right off the bat, I went to devour the souls of the infidel roaches that roamed my home while I was in dreamland. And oh my gosh! There's so many letters. Oh yeah, and my drug dealer's probably been wondering where I've been. My plug leaf tells me that he's been short on Mary Jane and needs my help to stock up. Of course I agreed as long as he hands me a chunk to blaze and then it was off to work. I couldn't believe it though, 97 weeds to smoke? This is gonna take a while. Jokes aside, I do really appreciate the devs putting something like this in the game after being gone for so long. It's a neat way to clean your town up and woo! Six minutes and six seconds, that's gotta be a world record, baby. After finishing collecting dope, Leaf handed me a good portion and we went our separate ways. Since it had been so long, I thought the fish in the water must have changed by now, considering it's a new season and all. So, like old times, here's a fishing montage. Later when I visited the plaza, that's where I locked eyes again with a big titty goth girl. It was so romantic, almost like seeing each other again for the first time. She was super happy to see me. I thought I would rob the store really quick on my way home, and that's all that really happened on my first day back. On my second day back, I thought I would treat my goth GF with a present. A rose sofa. Hopefully she invites me over for some Hulu and chill pretty soon. I say Hulu instead of Netflix because while I was gone, Netflix got cancelled for some show about tangerines called Cuties. Recently, Peck was talking mad smack while I was gone, calling my channel dead. So I planted a pitfall seed just for him. Oh god, Ursus, why? Take that, you son of a bitch. So this whole time I was gone, we only managed to raise 2,000 f***ing 
ringing bells for this well? I'm starting to remember why I went to sleep for so long. On my third day, the store was under construction, which was a tad bit frustrating because I was trying to stock up on spooky furniture for the weekend. I still managed to get a few things like a spooky bed and clock, but I'm totally underprepared for Halloween this Saturday. F Apparently someone new moved into Spagonia today too. His name's T-Bone. That's a cute name. He's probably a do- Hurry, burn it all down. I realized I never went into Shampoodle since it was built, and my head was screaming for a haircut. So after sitting down and flirting with this dilf, I decided on getting a me face. Those things were awesome back in City Folk, so I just wanted a meme. But I had no me's aside this one named Martin. <laughs> Who the fuck is Martin? Guess we'll just have to find out. Oh my gosh! I'm beautiful. Martin, if you're watching this and this is your me, dude, hit me up. After showing my plastic surgery off, it was time for the new well ceremony. And there, among all the ruckus, that's when I spotted her. What is with all these big titty pigs? I approached her after the ceremony and I gotta say, my Martin face had her feeling some type of way. Agnes must never know about us. Today's the day the store gets an upgrade and you know I'm prepared. My goth GF heard some rumors about me talking to other girls during the ceremony, so I showed her my look loyalty by giving her a goth fish. A goth fish for a goth bitch. After that I went right back to work, and by work I mean robbing the TNT Mart. Or in this case, T-I-Y? Whatever the f that stands for. Welcome, welcome! Put everything in the bag! <laughs> the store upgrade was barely that much bigger. I honestly thought there would be a second floor or something, so this was a bit underwhelming for sure. I gotta say though, the store's music is jamming. just listen to it! Another successful robbery. They also added Leaf into the main store now, so instead of needing to walk outside, it's something similar to the Abel sisters and how you just kind of walk over to LaBelle's side of the store. Pretty neat. So Friday finally rolls around and I needed to get ready for Halloween. There's only one thing to do and that's get my costume. But for some reason I couldn't get the pro designs to work. I know there's a way to make full on custom outfits, but I have no idea what to do or where to go. And I think it's a whole process I probably just glossed over. Either way, I gave up and tried putting together something with the in-game outfits. Halloween is finally here and I got my costume on, can you guess who I am? That's right! I'm Sans. So the way that Halloween works in New Leaf is you gotta walk around and find Jack. He's the god of Halloween and he gives you either a mask or spooky furniture in exchange for candy. But if you didn't stock up on candy during the month, don't even trip, dog! You can challenge the other villagers who all look the same to some mini games where they give you candy for winning however if you lose those mini games sh gets f real fast i tied in rock paper scissors with goose for like an hour straight like what the f only to end up losing and he ruined my sans costume from the games that i've seen there's only three you either play charades and guess what the villager is trying to communicate for candy rock paper scissors which has a really cute animation and the last game called made you look which is basically just rock paper scissors but you just need to look in the same direction direction as the villager. Two out of the three games are legit just chance games, but the punishments aren't that bad. Sometimes they'll change the stuff in your inventory to garbage, and honestly that's kind of f***ed up. There's also a chance to go inside the villagers' homes, and you can scare them just from wearing a spooky mask. I put on this mummy mask and scared the bejeebus out of T-Bone, and he gave me a lollipop to get the f*** out. If you trade a lollipop instead of candy to Jack, he gives you an extra special furniture item. So after I collected all my goodies, I went home and decorated my house for Halloween. Yeah, it's nothing too crazy, but I got this cool crystal ball that shows you your future. Oh. Well. I'm back and I'm radder than ever. I did a little stream about a week ago doing some island mini games and stuff, and during that stream my mom in game actually sent me this hairstyle. I have no idea why, but uh, thanks mom. Honestly, the more I play this game, the more I start to think about what there is to actually do. I could spend days and months trying to pretty up the place, but playing Animal Crossing for that long won't get me money or a healthy loving relationship. Believe it or not, I actually have a life outside of these videos. I noticed that the trees were red during November as well, which is really neat. I wonder what the other colors were during that time I was gone. Anyway, I felt like things around Spagonia had been a little dry recently, so I decided to visit Isabel and see if there was anything new we could build to spice things up a bit. And I was right, there wasn't anything crazy- Oh the cafe? How did
did I miss this? Bill, that sh ho. After that, I went straight to the ATM and paid it off immediately. I just wanted to mention that I read every single comment on my videos. Even if I don't respond to them all, I still look at them when I can. And I noticed a ton of you have been saying that you enjoy these videos because they're not New Horizons, which makes me kind of nervous because I was thinking of switching this series, no pun intended, to New Horizons once more content for that game is released. So let me know right now in the comments if that's something you'd like to see from me. Thanks everyone. On the second day, I don't remember why I dressed up this way. Huh. Anyway, who cares? The cafe was finally built. Let's go check it out. Oh man, this is awesome. It's so cool that in this game, the cafe is actually separated as its own thing from the museum. This was one of the coolest features that New Leaf introduced, being able to really design the layout of the town. I know New Horizons is arguably better at this, but this was the first time for the series and I still think there's technically more things to do in this game currently. What the heck? 2020 is nearly over and New Horizons still has no cafe in their game. Oh, what? Sorry, I keep zoning out. So I did a ton of daily stuff over and over again. You know, like cracking up rocks for bells and picking up mushrooms that get you freaking high. Whoa! And others were straight up furniture. What the fuck? I ran into this lost item on the ground, but the last time I tried helping people find their items, I legit couldn't find who it belonged to. So I'm just gonna walk away like I didn't see anything. Do -do 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 -do. The mushroom furniture is really cool, by the way. I was not not expecting it to look anything like this. I was kind of expecting ugly, hyper-realistic mushrooms, but this? This is really cute. I've been trying to cover my house in Thanksgiving stuff, but now I kind of want a hybrid of a mushroom forest too. On the third day, or more like the third night, I totally forgot that we had a local club. I put on the best rave outfit I could find and headed out. Which, by the way, the Samus helmet is really cool, because if you look closely, Samus's face is actually in the helmet. Like, really, look, she's there. There, that's Samus, holy sh- The club is only open past 8 p.m. During the day, it's just that weird homeless shrimp who gives you emotes for fruit. Nearly pissing myself with excitement, I headed inside, only to be completely disappointed. Where the hell is everyone? Oh right, there's a f***ing pandemic going on. At least nobody can see me crying in the club. KK Slider is now a DJ, which is pretty cool. But you don't really get anything for coming here, except maybe the chance to use these dancing emotes. The head bobbing is adorable though. I shall admit it. My guy Croquet was trying to find some bitches tonight too. Poor guy. He's too ugly anyway. I also bought a painting from Red that night. I'm crossing my fingers this guy doesn't scam me. I looked online, but all of them are too small for me to tell the fake differences. Or I'm just blind. I can't see anything with this freaking helmet on. Finally, Thanksgiving has arrived. The moment we've all been waiting for. Well, actually, it's the Harvest Festival. I don't think we should be celebrating Thanksgiving anymore for its dark, dark history. Animal Crossing is pretty progressive. A new villager moved in since Goose randomly moved out without saying anything. Kind of funny how the only turkey guy moves away right before Thanksgiving. He's smart, I'll give him that. But anyway, let's say hello to this filbert I've been hearing about. Oh god, he looks like he's subbed to multiple only fans. What a simp. Thanksgiving, I mean the harvest festival is pretty straightforward. You gotta give this huge chicken guy ingredients to cook with and in return you get a cool harvest furniture item. This time I needed to get horse mackerel, long mushrooms, and an apple, which weren't too hard to get. Considering if you walked inside homes and had fish to trade to the villagers, they would give you an ingredient to use, which can sometimes just be a random ingredient and not really something you generally need, like a peach. Time for a Harvest Fest fishing montage. So, fishing montage later, I was finally able to collect everything and hand in my ingredients. Which, for all the effort you put in, doesn't really feel worth it. This is probably the weakest event in the game. I thought Thanksgiving- I mean, Harvest Festivals had turkeys. Why am I handing all this stuff to a chicken? Whatever. All Franklin even gave me was this freaking fruit basket. The Harvest Festival's kinda underwhelming. All I did was fish and get random shit I didn't even need. Like vinegar. Wake me up when it's Christmas. Alright, alright, I'm coming. Oh, 
Matilda? What are you doing here? Is it Christmas yet? Where are we going, Matilda? I already told you, I'm not interested in furry ERP. It's too early for this. So last week was my birthday. Of course I was gonna get on Animal Crossing to check it out. I've never actually played Animal Crossing on my legitimate birthday before, so this was a pretty nice treat. It was so cute and it felt like a genuine surprise. They legit force you into your villager's house and give you a cute birthday party. You even use the 3DS microphone to physically blow out your candles and it's just... I love this game. No joke, I was smiling the entire time. And to top it all off, they even get you gifts. They got me this cool piano thingy. Wanna hear me play? I also wanted to give a formal thank you to everyone who was there during my birthday stream and those who submitted artwork for my annual fan art contest, which also takes place on my birthday. Thank you so much, everyone. You all made this year extra special for me. And just to treat myself on my birthday, I even went to go see my favorite comedian. All I needed was some fruit to give to the starving artist that is Dr. Shrunk. And what a mistake that was. I've been drinking. I have an alcohol problem. My only problem with alcohol is it wears off. Moving on, it's Monday of the following week and also the winter solstice. I straight up had no idea about this day. Usually I look up what events are going to happen ahead of time, but I totally forgot about this one. It was really cool to see it get all dark outside, even though it was like 2 p.m. Isabel was waiting out in the cold underneath the town tree and she's wearing an adorable coat. She looks so snug. <clears throat> she looks very respectable. Also, for some reason, she handed me some dog food. I guess that's tradition in her culture, since, you know, she's a bit- There was also a cool snowflake wand inside. Oh, that's so sick! I love useless bullshit like this in Animal Crossing. That's not even sarcasm, it's actually really charming. To the left of the town tree, there was also this photo stand-in for four people, but I don't really have any friends, so I took all four spots myself. Friends. Later that day, Goldie asked me to dig up her time capsule that I kept behind my house. I don't really remember when I buried this thing, but I remember keeping it in my backyard. Either way, I was excited to see what was inside. Oh, it was just some stupid elephant slide? And then she let me keep it? Was this even important to you, Goldie? I'm starting to think she's a little... On Tuesday, I noticed a sign in a big slope on the side of the town. I mean, if we're being honest, I just don't know how to read. And it stinks of marijuana every time I come by. Let's check it out! Oh, it was just a campsite. I met this cool dude named Harv, who told me about how his parents kicked him out after he tried pursuing his dream of becoming a professional stoner. And now he sells vapes to kids! And he also told me not to go in his RV. Let's go in the RV! Oh god, what the f*** is that?! I shouldn't have gone in the RV! Yeah, let's never go up that slope again. So with Toy Day coming up, I went for a little shopping and was able to get myself a big old Christmas tray. I never realized that you could buy more dog food at the store. And they all come with cool lights. I decorated my house a bit to fit the week, and that was about it for Tuesday. On Wednesday, it finally happened. Agnes invited me over! I couldn't believe it! We were finally taking our relationship to the next level. Oh yeah, baby, let's go! Let's get it on! Her house was just how I imagined it to be, and I felt like she was trying to send a message to me through her furniture. Alright, Agnes, I'm ready for you. After losing my virginity to my big titty goth GF, I changed into my Chad attire and went shopping, where I ran into my side hoe, Peggy. Things are a little awkward between us now. She totally could tell I just got laid. I mean, I'm even wearing my shirt with the flames on it! I met this dude in the plaza who said he was related to Isabel. He also sells plots of land and promised he would show me. He wasn't lying! But in seriousness, Digby's Street Pass feature is really cool. If you street pass someone, their home will show up, and you can go inside and get ideas or even order the same furniture. It's a super cool feature that really simplifies item collecting. Too bad nobody uses Street Pass anymore. On a brighter note, I got my fortune told to me, but I was starting to get a feeling that all this fortune telling voodoo woodoo stuff was cap. Get it? Cause she said cap. On Thursday it was finally toy day. Ay, ay, ay. What? They didn't have Santa hats, so I had to improvise. Oh, never mind, they got it right here. Oh, and a beard, too! But yeah, Toy Day is on Christmas Eve in real life time. I thought it would be on Christmas Day, but it's the day before. So I have to admit, I was a little thrown off. I thought today would be just like any other Thursday, but I guess not. And technically, Toy Day doesn't even start until 6pm, so I just got back on later that night. Ho ho ho, bitches and hoes. It's me, 
sand. Everyone I spoke to actually thought I was Santa. Even my two sexy ladies. I didn't really mind though. It seemed like everyone in town wanted to f*** me. Everyone kept telling me that some dude named Jingle was looking for me. So we eventually met outside the coffee shop, where he told me to pose as Santa Claus and give everyone in town a toy day gift. I agreed, but seriously, everyone in town? Being Santa sounds stressful. I'm gonna have some coffee first. You know, Brewster, delivering gifts to someone is really hard. I mean, you make one type of thing that everyone really likes, then they start to ask you for more of that thing, even though you might be kicking a dead horse. I like making them, don't get me wrong, but my other stuff is just as good sometimes. But if it makes other people happy, I guess I'm happy too, right? But am I really happy? Should I really be putting other people first like this? I mean, when's it gonna be my turn? Your coffee? Oh. Right, thanks. So apparently before Toy Day, you're supposed to chat up all the villagers, and then some of them might drop hints on what they'd like from Santa. But nobody really dropped any hints for me. So I went around town giving everyone random sh**, and boy oh boy were they all disappointed. Except for Filbert. But I mean, that guy was just happy someone spoke to him this year. What a f***ing incel. Running around with the sack is so cute. I seriously felt like an Animal Crossing Santa Claus. Even with a crappy reward, this event was still enjoyable. But honestly, what was this supposed to be? You couldn't have gotten me a Nintendo Switch? Santa needs a break. This whole week's been real stressful for me. I'm taking a vacation. Santa? What would you like for Christmas, little girl? I thought I'd visit the island for a little R&R, &R, and nothing soothes me more than some late night fishing. Time for a tropical fishing montage. After some amazing catches, I caught the last boat ride home. And I thought about making a snowman again. I think this time I'll make an entire snow fam- Well, fuck. <laughs>